Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got micro adjust stems and more 12 speed. More 12 speed? More 12 speed. Do you know what, Lasty? I think we should break some rules this week. It's the Tech Show. Firstly, let's start with some off-road tech, but don't turn off just yet. And for those of you who don't stray to the dark side of mountain biking, well, Shimano have just launched a new 12-speed group set. We're not gonna go wild with information though, because over on GMBN Tech, Doddy will have the full rundown of it, won't he? He will, but I think we should still talk about it, John, because mountain bike tech is definitely, there's a really influential place in road bike tech definitely. as well. If you think of things like disc brakes and stuff like that. But let's start with the cassettes on the Shimano the new Shimano XDR group set. There are two, or actually three cassette options, but two 12 speed cassette options. There's a 10 through to 45 and a 10 through to 51. 51. 51, that's right. So you've got a 450% gear range or a 510% gear range. There's also an 11 speed cassette available as part of this new XDR group set because the shifters are compatible with both 11 and 12 speed shifting. That is cool. That is a really cool feature, isn't it? Another cool feature that I think a lot of Shimano fans will be grateful for is that there is now a quick link on the XDR chain. Yeah, that's certainly a welcomed addition, isn't it? Actually? Yeah, something that, yeah, quick links, tool free installation. Makes it easier for everyone, doesn't it? It's great. Let's face it. Yeah. Now those cassettes, let's not finish with them just yet because they actually use a new type of fitting onto the free hub. So Shimano have traditionally used Hyperglide for the best part of 30 years now. And that I think uses 13 different splines to actually fit the cassette onto the free hub body. Whereas now they've got something called Micro Spline, which uses I think 21 different splines, which is quite different, isn't it? So. so Maybe you can offer a bit of an explainer here, John. Like, would that, will that benefit a cyclist? Will that off, help you to ride faster? Is there a marginal gain there? What, on the free hub? Yeah, uh, with, with more splines on the cassette. No, I wouldn't have thought so, no. I would have, you're gonna have exactly the same amount of contact. Really, don't see any difference. Okay, well if you know different, do tell us down in the comments. Yeah, can't see why it would, but I think it's pretty neat anyway, they've changed it. 30 years. The rear hub on the new XDR group set has also had a bit of a refresh. So it now uses a system on the free hub called Silence, which increases the number of engagement pulls. So there are now 60 of them there. So that is actually something that will benefit riders and will help you to just get a quicker snap when you're trying to come out the corners. Yeah, especially when you're in a really low gear, won't it? When you have that sort of bit of free space, really. Well, when you ride as slow as I do off-road anyway, there's a bit of movement there. So I think that's super cool. Plus, it's called silence, and guess what? It is silent. Apparently, those ratchets actually completely disengage when you free wheel. So if you are hugging someone else's back wheel when you're riding along and you're freewheeling, they will never know. I feel like we may have lost a whole section of pro bikes if silent free hubs make their way over to, uh, <laughs> yeah. over to the road bike world. But, yeah, it's, it's something different, it's mountain bike yeah. tech, but like we said at the top of this section, mountain bike tech has a hugely influential part in what we as road riders generally ride eventually. Mm. So we think it's interesting. Do let us know your thoughts though. Yeah, and will it go over onto the road side? Will we see Durace with 12 speed? Let us know in the comments. Now, one of the biggest talking points in the world of cycling in the last week has been that comeback and victory in the Giro d'Italia of Chris Froome. But we're not gonna talk about that here because it's been discussed in length both on the GCN Race News Show as well as the GCN Show this week. But what we are gonna quickly talk about is that bike of Chris Froome's. I never thought a pink bike could look quite as cool as that. How good does that look? Yeah, it's really cool actually. So what they did is they took his usual Pinarello Dogma F10 and just gave it a coat of pink. They added some pink accessories in there too, including, super fun attention to detail, his pink computer mount. Yeah. Another change that you might have spotted is that Froome actually didn't ride that exact bike during the final stage, and he also made a couple of changes to his seat during the last week of yeah, the Giro. Yeah, interesting There's choice. A few eagle-eyed cycling fans spotted this, so he moved away from his usual favorite, the Physique Antares, that he's been using for an incredible Five long years. Time. Five, Five years, years now and he switched it for some unbranded, slightly stripped down models later in the race. Yeah. An interesting one, that. Yeah, really strange choice. Really though. unusual to see riders changing saddle, full stop, and then even more unusual to see them changing saddle. In a grand tour, yeah. <laughs> right Ris near the end. Risky and bizarre move, but yeah. clearly one that paid off. Yeah. Anyway, I think the bike looks good. Let us know what you think of that in the comments down below. We're gonna have a vote poll up there, hot yeah. or not. Yeah, and more so. tech later on in the show. Rules, love them or hate them, we've got to abide to them though, don't we? Well, I think the answer to that is kind of, John. Some okay. rules, certainly, others, 
Maybe they're there for the breaking. Yeah. There is a thing in cycling called the Voluminati rules, and they're incredibly popular. And in general, they provide some pretty good, interesting, light-hearted, and funny guidance for cyclists out there. But should we, as cyclists who love tech, break a few of them? Yeah, some people take them a little bit too literal, don't they? If you, I don't know, have a little error on your bike or in your dress, something like that, some people like that actually quote those rules to you. So let's take a look then at some of these rules, and actually the ones which we should break as a cyclist. Yeah, let's have a think about tech rules debunked. Yeah. So, what about this one? It's all about the bike. What do you reckon about that? Well, I'm on the fence with that one, actually, John. I think that many people get presumably a lot of our viewers, because this is a tech channel, get a huge degree of pleasure from focusing on the really nerdy details of their bike, making it look as good as possible, and maybe don't mind whether they ride it that fast. Other people are at the total opposite end of the spectrum, and they don't care what their bike looks like, they don't care what it is, they just want to ride fast. Yeah. So I think there is a place for both camps within cycling. Yeah, I think that, you know, after all cycling, it is all about the bike to one degree, because no bike, no cycling, but as long as you've got a bike in good working order, just go out there and ride it, have some fun. Just that, get stuck in. I think there's something to be said for that, but I do also think there's something to be said for detailed, obsessed bike build. What the next one, that? the next one we've got is rule number 14, which is that shorts should be black. Now, I think you've got a specific, well, this one definitely applies to you, actually. Rules should all, uh, shorts should always be black. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, John. Um, I would agree with that, Short black shorts are a good thing. Yeah, but, I don't know, I think it should be broken. Say if you're world champion, if you're in a leader's classification of a race, just go all out, L make yourself look like a barber's pole or whatever. Think back to Mario Cipollini when he wore those stars and stripes shorts. Okay, he may have looked a little bit like an American wrestler, a bit like Hulk Hogan or something like that, but it made a statement, it stood out, people talked about it. I don't think it should just be limited to black. I think black are generally more sociable depending on weather conditions, but let's agree to disagree, <laughs> let's, let's agree, to disagree on this one. Yeah, you're right. Okay. A wet day in white shorts is not pretty. So the next is one we've got is rule number 31, which says that spare tubes, multi-tools and repair kits should be stored in your back pockets. And I'm going to hop straight in here, John, <laughs> yeah. because I'm going to say that I kind of agree, but I kind of don't. Because yeah. I think it's quite, you know, if you're just nipping out for a quick ride, if you've got a couple of, a couple of spares, throw them in your pocket. That's yeah. fine. Saddlebags, I think, are a good thing for storing stuff, but yeah. you do need to be a bit careful, because if you leave your stuff in your saddlebag for ages, like a couple of inner tubes, and you don't check on them, you <laughs> might happen to me. Yeah, it's you might find me. yourself on the side of the road and pump it up an inner tube which won't inflate. Because you've and, worn through the hole. A yeah. little tip for that, actually, wrap your inner tubes up in tin foil. Or something like that. There we go. So there's a tip from John and also a lesson that we've both experienced yeah. that you can now learn from. I think, however, that pumps should either be on your frame or in your back pocket. Don't ever let Cy Richardson hear you say a pump on a frame. He's got a big problem with frame pumps. Well, Cy's not here anyway, and okay. wow, well, yeah, don't put, I don't know, I don't like them in the back pocket. I don't like things in back pockets, and you've got, you haven't got room for your arm warmers, your wallet, your phone, those things, energy bars, gels. I think yeah. my pros use saddlebags. They must be pretty all right. Well, this is the tech show, and this isn't directly a tech pet hate. Like a semi-empty saddlebag that has enough for the metallic things inside to rattle. Oh no! Yeah, that's horrible. That's difficult. So yeah, and storing everything in your back pockets does entirely avoid that. So maybe I'm agreed. Maybe I'm not. Yeah. Rule forty-five, John. You pulled out. Slam your stem. Tell, oh. us, tell us why. Yeah. Right. Do you know what? It may well look good, but unless you're flexible enough to actually get away with it, then. Don't try and just copy what the pros do. Try to be slammed and get really, really low because quite often you're actually gonna go slower because if you're not used to that position, your hips aren't gonna be able to open out quite as much as if you're riding maybe in a slightly less aggressive position, but you're able to actually release more power from your legs. And the pros don't actually always have their slams, stems slammed, rather, right. that's a little bit of a fallacy. I think that, um, no, I think that the bikes with slammed stems look good, but I think if you're really into tech, you should consider how you interact with your bike as an extension of that, and you should maybe also consider that slamming your stem might not be the fastest for all of us out there. Yeah, it might look good, but in the long run, it might not perform good, right? Your next one you put out is called Do Your Time in the Wind. Yeah. Again, can, a bit of explanation. Well, I think we should break that because it's not always the strongest rider who wins a bike race. 
quite often it's the smartest. Now, your race might not be one where you actually pin a number on. It might just be a sprint to the local cafe or town sign. And do you know what? If you've got bragging rights over your mates because you've won that sprint, because you've sat on the back the whole way, it doesn't matter. Sit on there, don't do your time in the wind, just hide in the wheels and sprint. To relate that to tech, sure, do your time in the wind, but maybe look at how you can make your bike as aero as possible so that your mm. time in the wind is more efficient. Exactly that. Have Spend a look, less time in the wind. Yeah, have a look around where the flags are flying, you know, that sort of thing, wind direction. Try and, try and do your time on the front, basically, when it's the easiest time to do it on the front, right? Next up, descend like a pro, John. <sighs> right, okay. Now, pros, they've got closed roads for this, so don't try and emulate them by getting down on your top tube, cutting corners, basically risking everything. The pros, they ride day in, day out. They're highly experienced, so don't try and break that rule. I've got a couple of ways that you can descend not like a pro, which are, you can, for, well, although pros now do, are allowed to race on disc brakes, of course, most of them still don't. You can descend not like a pro with disc brakes and descend better and have better braking. Yeah, win, there we are. win, win, win. 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 <laughs> and rule 90, never get out of the big ring. Never get out of the big ring, get out of it. I mean, unless you're on a one by system, then yeah, you're gonna have to stay on the big ring. But otherwise, arthritis is not cool, is it? No, it's not, but riding in the big ring does look pretty cool. It does, yeah, but if you're groveling to the point of a standstill, just break that rule. Yeah, so those are only the rules, John, that, that we've picked out. I think there are definitely a few like tech-specific ones, like I know of people who only ever use white bar tape, or who only ever use black bar tape. Guilty. Yeah, there we go. So let us know your unofficial tech rules down in the comments, and we're definitely going to read out a few of our favourites next week. We might even make a video of GCN Tech's unofficial tech rules. Yeah, like what bits of folklore have you been told by other cyclists, rules, these unwritten rules, that basically you think are absolutely ridiculous and we should break? Let us know. Let us know. Also, last week we spoke about basically, should we go back to basics on cycling? And 80% of people said no. So that's quite conclusive really, isn't it? John was wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> now, the Giro d'Italia has finished, which is, well, a sad time really, isn't it? But don't worry, because we have spotted more tech being used there. And first up is a new stem from Envy, and we've discovered it's called the Aero Carbon Model Stem. So basically the riders of Team Dimension Data have been using it, and this, I think, is a really, really neat stem doesn't just look good, but also it comes with different shims. So essentially you can vary the angle of the stem as well as the length of it. So plus or minus two and a half millimeters either way. And also the stack height too. Yeah, it's really cool. I don't, clearly it's versatile from the description that you've just given. And I really like having that versatility built into a bit of bike tech. It's a stem that if you're particularly particular, particularly particular about your bike setup, you can obviously achieve that with this product. But if you're not yet, that nerdy or that geeky about it, you can maybe use it to become a little more geeky and to experiment with your position on the bike. Maybe find some watts, maybe find some comfort. Depends what your thing is. And I think there's a principle to have on a bit of bike kit that directly affects bike fit. That's a really cool one to have. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it comes in at $300, so it's not cheap. It does come with titanium bolts though. But yeah, like you say, you don't want to splash out loads of cash on something and suddenly be oh, do you know what, it's no good, I'm gonna to have to get rid of that. So instead, $300, and you've got a little bit of room to play around with it, spot on. Yeah. Another new bit of tech, John, is that Roval, and Roval are, of course, the wheel division of massive bicycle and component brand Specialized, has released a disc wheel. So prior to yeah. this, they didn't have a disc wheel in their range, so all of their team riders were using an unbadged version, and usually people use either a lightweight or a zip disc yeah, when they do that. sometimes, I think. Yeah, they use all one sorts, of, really. One of, one of three brands. But now, Roval sponsored World Tour riders can have their own disc wheel, and it's called the 321. Quite a cool name for a TT wheel. It certainly is. Now, what's interesting here is that they've basically they've taken you know, a step into that disc wheel market, but considering the size of both you know, the road market and triathlon market, I don't blame them. You know, if I had the cash, possibly I'd do that too. Uh, now, the bearings, they come from ceramic speed, so obviously it is a high-end product, and the hub internals are from DT Swiss, so using their cool-sounding ratchets. Interesting to see that they've gone to those two manufacturers for the products as well. Yeah, they do use them as well in their standard road wheels, so presumably there's some sort of collaborations there along the line. Yeah. But nice um, bit of tech. A frame that we've spoken about quite a lot, mainly because it's really, really cool, is uh, Superman Miguel Angel Lopez's Argon 18. Oh, stunning. It's custom painted, but an eagle-eyed viewer spotted that Angel Lopez was actually using the OSPW system. 
Which you're going to have to explain, John. Yep. So OSPW is oversized pulley wheel system. Oh, it was that simple. Okay, yeah. you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, and that's from Ceramic Speed. And basically, they are oversized jockey wheels. So they're on the rear derailleur. And basically, the idea behind it is that your chain moves freer. So it doesn't have quite as tight bends or angles to work with, allowing you to basically get some watts for free or save yourself some watts in effect. And you were saying to me just before we started shooting this, actually, that. Um Lopez's team, Astana, are actually not sponsored by Ceramic Speed, so it looks no. like a product that Lopez or the team have gone out and got of their own volition to help the riders go faster. Yeah, I like to think that Lopez basically spent some of his prize money or his pocket money and gone out and bought that because he's thought to himself, that's a little marginal gain there. I think if you're a Grand Tour podium finisher, you don't necessarily have pocket money anymore. Well, he's quite a young rider, isn't he? Anyway, but that sort of thing, you can't hide, can you? You know, you, sometimes there are riders who use different handlebars, for instance, and you can't necessarily spot a difference, but that, you can definitely see it on the bike, so there's no hiding from it. Always cool to see, or cool to be one of the first people to spot non-sponsored products. Yeah. Another one that we should update you on is Sergio Enyao's Pinarello Dogma F10. It's a bike that John filmed when he visited Girona earlier this year to shoot some of the pro bikes. And you actually mentioned, I think, that it needed a bit of an update. I did, yeah. And you know what? I'm very glad that Sergio actually watches the GCN Tech Show and basically he listens to the advice because he's got himself a new fancy looking Pinarello and doesn't it look a beauty? I like very that. Very cool. Do you know what? I think actually there's another rule there from those Velominati rules that should go in. It should say if you're a national champion, in fact a UCI rule, if you're a national champion you should have to have a matching bike, helmet and jersey. Not shorts if your national champions of colours yeah, are predominantly yeah. white. Yeah, that's right, yeah. But a lot of people said about Ryan Mullen. You know, they asked why his Trek um, Madone wasn't in Irish national champs colours. So there we are. Maybe Fair it question. should be a rule. Anyway, as always, keep letting us know your thoughts on all of the tech that we've discussed so far in the show down in the comments. Now, for those of you who were tuned in to the Giro d'Italia last week, you will know just how savage some of those climbs can be. And well, some of the pros out there it still amazes me how they get over those climbs so easily, or appears to be anyway. Definitely, I think the whole advent of compact chain sets has probably helped out many yeah. riders in the pro peloton. It's always interesting to have a bit of a look at the gearing that the riders are using for some of these climbs. Maybe to see if you can get some advice on what you should take, although personally I would gear down significantly from what these guys are using. <laughs> so the gearing that Tom Dumoulin used, as we can see in this tweet from Shimano, and this was for the Zonkland stage, right John? It was, yeah. So he's using a 36 tooth inner chainring and a 53 tooth outer, so pretty standard outer, and not a non-standard inner chainring. Not for a climb like that. And he was using a 11 through to 30 cassette. Yeah. I would have thought 36, 30 might even leave you over-geared on the Zonkland. Possibly, yeah. I would have thought 36.28 would be... I think 36.28, if you're racing, anyway. But it just goes to show that actually those gear ratios do work because we do get a lot of questions about, you know, what, what gears work with what. So it's good to know that if it works for Dumoulin, it will work for you, providing, of course, you've got the same legs as him. But anyway, you know what we mean. John just hinted that he had better legs than Dumoulin by saying he thought he could ride the Zonkland on 36.28. I could ride it. Just very, 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 very slowly. If this video gets, I don't know, what should we say, 100 likes? No, more than 100 <laughs> likes. John will ride the Zong Clan on 36.28. Yeah, thanks, mate. Looks like I will. Now, sticking with the bikes of Tom Dumoulin, so giant, it would appear through looking at the list of approved frames from the UCI that they've got some new bikes coming out for 2019. So the Propel, Rim Brake, and also the Defy and Live Envy. So we're probably going to see some changes there. It's yeah. interesting. Well, I mean, the main thing you can tell from the UCI's approved list of frames is first of all that there's a new frame on the way, yep. second of all that it's approved, and thirdly you can kind of see what the name might be. So yeah. apart from that, we're not really <laughs> going to know what to look for until we see it, but we will keep our eyes peeled yeah. for these frames at Race Up the Tour de France. Another interesting new tech development for me this week, John, is SRM and Lux collaboration. So German power meter brand SRM have powered with the original clipless pedal brand, French brand Look, to produce the SRM Exact, but it's a pedal-based power meter rather. It has four strain gauges, and actually compared to Look standard pedal, it doesn't add too much in the stack height, so you're not gonna be grounding your pedal on the floor all the time. Nope. Each pedal has got four strain gauges. Yeah, I think they look pretty good myself. Now, there are other power meter pedals out there on the market, and these do come in you know, at the highest price out of all of them out there. But let's not forget that SRM are basically the pioneer of power meters, aren't they? And look, 
did make the first commercially successful clipless pedals out there. So it's two companies combining who have basically an a wealth of knowledge and expertise in those respective markets. Uh, the price, it comes in at 1,400 euros for a pair, or you can get a single-sided option, which basically just doubles your, pa your power from that one leg to give you an estimated top power. Can you choose which side you get the single side for? Because I have one leg stronger than the other, so I'd like to choose that side and double that power rather than double my weaker leg. Funnily enough, it's the right leg, I believe, I'd be from fine. this. I'd I, think, be fine. I think from memory, from reading the press release, it's the right leg, which I'll be happy about that too, because my left leg is absolutely terrible. Yeah, and they are due for release, actually, uh, July the 1st. So we may, may well see them at the Tour de France. We were indeed. Apparently they've been tested by Andre Greipel and Adam Hansen so far. So that's a couple of guys out there who certainly know a thing or two about putting some watts out. So we know that they can record high power, but until we've had a go on them, we won't know about yeah, low power. Yeah, we can't confirm low cadence and low watts. Now, being the fussy so-and-so I am with cleanliness of a bike, I'm actually really pleased to see this product, and it could be ideal for bike packers or touring cyclists, but what is it? This is the K-Wipe, or Quipe, not sure how you pronounce it, from company Crankalicious. Apparently, these uh, wipes basically have just enough product to allow you to detail a matte carbon frame. And if you have ever tried detailing a matte carbon fibre bike before, it's not that easy to get them looking fantastic, is it? It's somewhat difficult, John, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know really how much they're gonna to appeal to those people like bike packing or touring because, well, I think sort of that off the grid style is what appeals to them, isn't it? But anyway, if you don't have a hose pipe at home or lots of room, you know, maybe just get some and give your bike a polish. Yeah, ideal if you live in a flat, to be fair. Yeah, plus they're biodegradable and the packaging is recyclable too. So that's always gives a big thumbs up from me. Good stuff. Now, lastly, I've got a little gift for you, mate. Oh, Remember no these way. from last week? Go on, mate. Put them on, get some KOMs and report back. I shall. Thank you, John. You're too kind. That's all right. I'm going to do that awkward thing which you don't really like when I do this to you. But anyway, new shoes. He's happy. Now, last week we went aerodynamic and technological, well, kind of, and we inducted the Cinelli Aerolite helmet. But this week, let's actually induct one of the most iconic bits of cycling tech ever. It's the Reynolds 531 tube set. It certainly is. So the Reynolds 531 tube set was a manganese molybdenum medium carbon steel tubing. And it had applications beyond cycling as well. So it was also used in the construction of aircraft and it was the subframe on the Jaguar E-Type. But what about cycling? Well, it was hugely popular just due to the variety of butting, tube diameters and tube sets that were available. So if you wanted, you could have the 531C with the C standing for competition. You could have the 531ST with the ST standing for special tourists or the 531ATB. ATB, of course, all-terrain bike, early mountain bikes. That's right. Now, rumor has it that as many as 20 consecutive Tour de France victories were actually achieved on board Reynolds 531 tube sets. Now that is amazing. I mean, I hope it's more than a rumor. I hope it is so, so true. But sadly, the actual use of 531 tube sets actually went into decline with the increase in popularity of TIG and MIG welding on bike frames because basically the tubes didn't react well to the heat being used, which is quite a shame really. But the good news is, for those of you reminiscing out there, is it still available? Special order only though. Do you know what, I had a 531C frame, absolutely loved it. Probably one of the nicest bikes I've ever owned. I'm gutted I got rid of it. One of the many that got away. Anyway, let us know your nominations for the GCN Wall of Fame down there in the comments below. And who knows, maybe we'll pick yours. Now, bike of the week time. Last week, we put two time trial bikes head to head, and that was the bike of Group Armour FDJ, their Lapierre, and that was up against the Scott Plasma of Mitchelton Scott. And 72% of the votes, they went to the Scott Plasma, so there we are. Yeah, it's scant consolation, I imagine, for the last week of the Giro. I don't know, mate. I mean, to win the GCN Tech Bike of the Week, that's quite an achievement. I so, Simon just, Yates, don't worry, mate. Just saying I know what I'd rather have. So this week, John, what we thought we should do, or what I thought we should do, is we should put up one of each of Froome's latest Grand Tour victory bikes. Oh, so you've nice got one. the yellow one from last year's Tour de France, the red one from last year's Welter, and the pink one from this year's Euro. Nice thinking, last eight. Three options. Have your say and vote up there. Yeah, vote. Which one are you going to go for? I'd be telling. Yeah.
Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for to see if your bike has made it into the bike vault or not. The moment where we rate it nice or super nice. Oh great, he's brought that bell off the wall. Great, nice one, Lasty. Right, shall we crack on then? Let's crack on. Okay, first up, Connor McHugh, Denver, Colorado, and this is Cormac's Salsa Cutthroat. Check it out, I like I the colours of that. There's some cool touches there. He's got the Crank Brothers pedals that you can use as either flat or clips. He's yeah. got a Camelback bottle. It's not a GCN Camelback bottle, but nevertheless, it's one of those he, insulated ones. He's got also a bottle cage mounted on the on both sides I'm of the dome tube. Trying to work out what the wheels are as well, though. Uh, they are, I don't know, actually. Massive, don't know. massive don't ass know. saver. Yeah. It's like you're not going to get a wet bum with that. Big old tyres. Uh, looks to me like that is a hack of a chainstay uh, protector there as well. <laughs> Super nice. Next well, one. there we are. There we are. Last, last he's rang the old bell. Here we go. This is Gais Lemkes uh, from the Netherlands, and this is their giant TCR Advance SL. Rocking Q rings. Yeah, Q rings. Interesting, Interesting choice that. Um, what have we got? A pair of fulcrum wheels. Racing zeros, I think. Looking Composition the of the pattern. photos, really nice. Beautiful. And that looks like it's a bike specific path if we look at that sign in the background. Um, I'm going to give it a team. nice. It's a nice for me, John. Is it? It's well, nice. it's got to be majority, hasn't it? So it's a nice from me, too. There okay. we are. It's a nice, nice one, Geese. Oh, what about this? Hender. And this is uh, from Philadelphia. That is a cool looking bike, isn't it? That's the Navy Yard in Philadelphia, in fact. Canyon Aero CF SLX Disc. New Dura Ace, got Reynolds wheels on it. Altegra, Altegra, yeah, that's right. Canyon R8, bottle. R8000. I love it. I yeah. love the stealth black look. But there's I a love problem the, with this bike, isn't I love, there? I love the, the angle of the cranks is right. But what's the obvious thing that they've messed up on? It's taken from the non-drive side. Rookie so, mistake. So we, It's a nice bike. It's a stunning bike, but the photo in itself, we're not going to give a super nice two because it needed to see it the other way around. Yeah, it also it. looks like the rear mech's a little bit uncomfortable there. Yeah, it does. Stunning bike, nice photo. Yeah. Right, here we go then. Martin Klopp from Utrecht in the Netherlands. Uh, this is their BMC. I like that. A beautiful colour, yeah, isn't it, that? I'd give that a super nice, actually. Yeah, that's a, yeah I think the back... Didn't have time to talk about it. But super yeah, nice. super nice bike, don't need to say much. Uh, and finally, this is Nathan, and this is the Imperial Palace in Tokyo, and this is their Tyrrell CSI Mini Velo. That's that a, is cool. That is a cool bike, isn't it? I've never seen one of those. I, well, I've seen lots about these Mini Velos, but I've never actually managed to get my leg over one, but I want to go on one of these Mini Velos. Basically, they're like super trick mini bikes, but for grown-ups. Yeah. Yeah. Should we see if we can get one? Nice or super nice? Well, look at the size of that chain ring. It can only be super nice for me. Oh. Well, there we are. He's rung the bell a few times today. And how, John, do our viewers submit their photos to Bikeball next week? Well, make sure it's a good photo. That always helps. But email it to the address on screen right now and include your name, very important, where you come from, and a little bit about the bicycle too. And maybe we will pick you to go in the bike vault. We have thousands of submissions and we're gradually getting through them. So please do be patient. More bike vault next week. So there we are, nearly the time for the end of the show. But don't worry, because we've got more great content coming up for you this week. So on Friday, I check out a bike with five power meters on it. Five! Never thought it could happen. Anyway, then on Saturday, I take a close look at the bike of Ben Hermans of the Israel Cycling Academy, and that's his De Rosa Protoss. It's got a very fancy paint job on that one, lastly. Yeah, and on Sunday, we're getting geeky as always, but we're gonna to link to a video on the GCN channel about is FTP dead? And the Geek Edition is gonna be right here on GCN Tech. On Monday, John is gonna show you how to fit a new chain ring. Not a regular job, but an important one nevertheless. Mm. And then on Wednesday, it's the GCN Tech Clinic. Back to help answer your problems and queries and questions. Now, do remember as well to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big thumbs up. And what about these flashy garms we're wearing last week? Definitely. So, if you didn't know, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com is where you can buy all of our GCN kit. So, from Camelback bottles to Park Tour bottle openers to GCN ASOS Pro Team kit, we've got our own range of fan cycling kit and our own hoodies and t shirts we've too. We've got loads out there. And it's one of the best ways to support the channel. And we really, really appreciate every single one of our fans who heads there. Yeah, we certainly do. And now for another great video, click just down here. And to subscribe, click there. Just here.